What's up? This is Kong from X Faders, and in this video, we're going to take a minute and review the Mackie Thump Go. This speaker is a two channel portable speaker, allowing you to perform on the go. I would like to thank Zounds for providing this demo unit. Please check out their website for all of your DJ equipment needs. And if you like the content and it helped you out in any way, please consider using the links below to purchase your Mackie Thump Go or any other DJ equipment. So let me start off by saying I was very excited to receive this item in the mail. I heard a lot of great things about this speaker, but I wanted to test it out for myself. Now coming from another speaker, and I'll talk about it a little bit later in the video, um, I, it was kind of lacking. It did what I needed to do for the moment, but I started to notice its uh, deficiencies. Now in all fairness, I know there wasn't a lot of options available at the time when I bought the other speaker, but I will tell you that over the last year, there has been a surge of portable speakers on the market coming from JBL, EV, Bose, and a lot of other great manufacturers. But if this is indicative of how these speakers sound or these portable uh, units sound in general, then we're sitting in good company. I was very impressed with how the Mackie Thump Go sounded and why I'm probably going to add this speaker to my list of DJ gear. As it relates to portability, my first portable speaker was the Samson Expedition Escape. So as you can see here is one of the lower tier Samson speakers. So it's only 30 watts. Uh, battery life is, is 20 hours, but I, I, I would challenge that to be a lot less. Two input channels, including blue, Bluetooth. Um, the speaker only weighed eight pounds. So for me, it was portable, good on the go. But I know some of the portable speakers, Bluetooth speakers that we use now rival this type of power. So I have one of the Soundcore Anchor uh, speakers and it's just as loud, if not louder than this particular speaker. The advantage at the time was that it used quarter inch microphone input, um, Bluetooth, of course, and also a one eight jack for you to plug in music directly into it. So I was using an RCA to one eight. So it got the job done pretty well in some cases, but when I needed a little bit more volume, I was pushing it to clip it and you can hear it clearly from the speaker. So I can't say anything bad necessarily about it, um, but it just was not enough power. So in the future, I hope to come up with some type of formula that will help you decide on which speaker, how much wattage you would need in general, instead of just how many people it can support. So I did some extensive testing on this speaker. So I purchased a rangefinder, I had a linear recorder, um, and I also did a sound level recorder. And I just attached it to a tripod so I could uh, record the levels and listen back to it. But the reality is this was overkill. I didn't need any of this. Just listening to the speaker from different distances told everything that I needed to know. So I went back approximately 50 yards from the speaker, uh, set them up on tripods fairly high, and I just took the range fire in there to calculate uh, 50 yards. So that's 49.7, so close enough. In most cases, a ceremony would not be uh, 50 yards wide or 50 yards long back. At best, it'll probably be about 30 yards, but I just wanted to test it out in the extreme case. In this situation, you'll probably use two different speakers, uh, one up, uh, one in the far back and one up close out of uh, uh, sight, line of sight. So forgive me for the um, background noise. I think this is the best representation of having an outside during a ceremony, aside from me breathing heavily um, from this long walk. I wanted you to hear how the speaker sounded at about 10 yards, 20 yards, 30 yards, and then 50 yards. Now, let me say first, uh, YouTube compression does affect sound quality, but if you have a set of headphones, go ahead and throw them on so you can hear this in the best quality possible. I adjusted the volume to about one third, so it's not necessarily about loudness, but quality of sound. We already know that the speaker does get loud, but how loud and how well does it sound um, depending on how far back you are. So I'll stay styling for the most part of this just to allow you to hear it without knowing the interruptions. And then at the end, I'll give you a little bit of feedback as far as what I heard um, up close and personal.
so I'm back at the 50 yard mark. Uh, you can still hear the speaker. It is faint, but again, remember it's only set to one third. So we still have plenty of headroom to go louder if we needed to. Uh, for me, the bass was still punchy. Um, coming back to about 10, 20, 30 yards, the bass was still punchy. Uh, highs were very clear. No issues there, no distortion, nothing like that. And that's what I would expect uh, with the volume being at one third. Of course, you can go a little bit higher or actually quite a bit higher and it'll still sound pretty good. But I just wanted to give you a, a quick demo, nothing scientific, but just so you can hear how everything sounded. So with all that out of the way, let's talk a little bit more technical. Um, let's discuss some of the features of the speaker as well as how things are set up for it. So on the screen at the moment is the signal chain. So you have the channel one, channel two, um, and you have the volume knobs. Notice that the Bluetooth is not a part of the through signal chain. So what that means for you is that if you're playing something via Bluetooth from the speaker, it will not play through the through XLR. Moving forward is the feedback eliminator, which prevents squelch or squeal uh, from the microphone when you're talking through it. Next up is the music ducking. So just like a talk over feature, um, the music will lower once it senses a signal through the microphone. Next is the voicing modes, which adds the different uh, EQ settings uh, that's built into the speaker. If you're using the app, which is the next uh, block on the list, um, you have access to a two band EQ. So you're adjusting the low and the high portion and it will just uh, apply it to the curve. Next up is the levels in the mute button. So that's right before the main output. So we'll talk about it a little bit more in detail. Um, I'll show you some of the things that I noticed with this particular speaker, but then it just goes into the crossover, which is the high pass, low pass, um, then going into the limiter and then the thermal uh, monitoring and then out to the speakers. Before we go any further, huge shout out to Mackie for how they wrote the manual. We live in a time and age now where we don't actually read the manual to the, the electronics that we have, but uh, reading Mackie's manual to this particular speaker is, is actually kind of fun. Uh, the tone that they use to, to convey their messages or to give you instructions is kind of cool. So I know it's sounding weird, but take a minute, take a look at the manual. By doing so, I found that these two modes were omitted from the speaker. The megaphone voicing mode, which basically the quiet talkers, it will lift up the volume. And then for the whisper voicing mode, it will lower it for loud talkers. So this, you know, sort of reminds you of a compressor and expander, uh, essentially to be able to lower the voicing when uh, somebody's just talking way too loud. Um, and then if, if you have somebody that just does not talk well into the mic or does not have a microphone etiquette, it will bring up the volume for them to sound pretty good. So everything on the back of the unit is pretty much self-explanatory, right down from the music speech, monitor mode, sub mode, all the features on the speaker are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, they even went as far as putting the EQ um, graph on the bottom of the voicing modes if you pan down a little bit on the speaker. So it gives you as much information as needed to uh, successfully use the speaker and, and have a good idea of which one of the, each settings uh, mean. One of the things I wanted to talk about was about the the volume levels or the, the potentiometers here that allow you to adjust the volume. When we look through the signal change, uh, it clearly stated or showed that the settings for the app will overtake channel one and channel two. So what that means is, and, and what I'm showing you here is when the volume is turned all the way down on volume two, so I'm not using Bluetooth to transmit the audio, I'm actually using the uh, one eight headphone jack to transfer the audio from the phone. If you notice channel two volume is set all the way to minimum, but you're still hearing some bleed of the audio. So I'll be silent for a second so you can hear it. As you can see here, channel two is still turned all the way down, but you're still getting audio bleed. I could still adjust the volume from the main um, and that still changed the overall level. You can make some changes to, to channel two and you will hear a slight difference in gain, but it wouldn't be like uh, the, the full volume that was being offered from the phone. Now, when I paired this device with the app on the iPad, um, you have more control over channel two. So when I actually turned it down on the iPad, it actually turned down the volume completely. Um, adjusting the channel two knob did not make any difference, no change at all. It was completely silent. It wasn't until I turned it up on the iPad that I uh, received audio again. So just be mindful. Um, 
this may be an issue it may not be but what it has caused me to do to cut music completely i need to use the tablet and the app associated with it to be able to control the music a little better um, if you are without a tablet or or a android phone iphone um, you can just turn down the main but it may be troublesome if you are away from the speaker or need to turn it down quickly for an announcement or something else that's going on so i also like to offer tips during my reviews and stuff if possible so I wanted to post up um, the factory reset from the manual. You can do a soft reset by just turning off the speaker to turn it back on. But if you need to do a hard reset, you can do so by holding the voice in mode button as well as the outdoor mode button while you're powering the device on. And you hold that for basically five seconds uh, during the boot up and it will reset everything. So you'll lose connectivity to your uh, handheld device, whether it be a tablet or a phone but at least it gives you an opportunity to start over um, if you're having issues with the settings or configuration. So I can tell you I extensively tested all the features and all the modes of the speaker and they all work great. Um, I didn't have any issues, outdoor mode, music ducking or feedback. Um, everything sounded pretty good and I'm not just saying that just because um, I really enjoyed listening to the speaker and using it. Um, and that is the reason why I said at the beginning that I'm considering adding this to my list of gear. Um, it did everything that I needed it to do, no questions asked. Um, of course, the the channel two thing or channel one thing where I couldn't uh, turn off the volume all the way is, is a slight issue. But overall, if I'm just connecting it to a mixer and a microphone, it's not a big deal for me. So I hope this information was helpful for you. If you have any questions or comments, drop me a line down there in the comment section below. Other than that, that's all I got. Please like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on the website at www.xfaders.com.